What's up guys? I'm gonna try and keep this brief because you, you all have seen and read and heard so much on the, uh, the Valve Index already. So what I'm gonna do today is just do a small comparison to why I upgraded from the Oculus Rift S to the Valve Index. So this headset, you've seen unboxing videos for it. I don't gotta unbox it, it's gorgeous. The way the box looks in this thing is amazing. So organized, such good build quality. This headset is so legit. Um, one of the main things that made me leave the Rift S to come to this headset, because I do, as you see behind me here, I do a lot of sim racing. Um, and while I'm driving, I was just, oh man, turned off by the amount of minimal FOV and so much black in the Rift S around your eyes. Beyond r driving a car, I had a lot of fun in other games, you know, because I wasn't thinking about it too much because other games are putting you in into other worlds that might not can change your perspective on reality, but a car is a car. That's the main thing. So when I'm in a car and I can't look and I just see black off the side of my eye, almost this close probably, just black, can barely see my mirrors unless I do like that, but guess what you're doing after you've turned your head? You've, took it, you've taken your eyes off the road. And doing that was a killer of immersion for me when driving cars and sim racing. So I decided to bite the bullet and give the Index a try. Now, it was scary. I had some, some negatives and things that were kind of lingering in the back of my mind that made me not want to drop on this because it is $1,000. Uh, and that was people talking about them breaking. I was nervous about that. Now, I'm just a user of the headset part. I bought the full kit, but with sim racing, primarily, I'll just be using this. And my left controller, because I'm left hand to move through the menus. But you could get away with just this with sim racing. I've seen some people do it, but I bought the whole kit just to try it out, because, you know, it's got finger tracking. It's fancy, you know. So with these controllers right here, you know, you hold it and you slide your hands right in and you guys have probably seen this many times too but you know it feels very comfortable a little awkward around where the joystick is you know compared to where your thumb is going sometimes you'll be thinking you're pulling it up to go straight but because it's in your hand you're actually kind of going a little bit more to the right but i don't use this nearly as much i just bought two games on a steam sale i bought pop one and also Pavlov, and I've got a few other games, but my main thing is sim racing. Seto Corsa Competizione, and Seto Corsa, Project Cars 2, I've been through them all. Um, that's my main priority. So, FOV. <sighs> yeah, it is amazing in this. Um, would I say it's human-like? Would I say it's even, like, perfect yet? No, but it's way better than other headsets I've tried. I've tried the Quest 2, I've tried the Quest, I've tried the Rift S, and I think that's it. Mostly Facebook products I've tried. And uh, they uh, have all been a little bit more of a letdown. I was really considering the Quest 2 over this, but I just felt like if I'm going from a Rift S to a Quest 2, like, that FOV is not going to be immensely different. But this, you can slide that slider right up, right up to your eyes. To the point where it's like brushing my eyebrow. And it feels like your whole world is open compared to this. Now, the sweet spot, man, I'll tell you what. Oculus owns with lenses. Oh, my God. I'll give you this. Oculus kills it. Every, I, every Quest or Quest 2 or Rift S I've tried on, you slip and you see. Perfect. Done. Slip, see, ready to go. This takes some adjustments. You know, it's a, you know, if you have to think of it as an iPhone 12, then you got like an iPhone 12 Pro. This would be like the Pro. It, it has so many tiny, minute adjustments you can make that you got to get it perfect for your face. But because of this, it can work for many different types of faces. It's just not as easy as giving it to someone, hey, slip it on, man, try this game. They might not be seeing perfectly what they should be seeing. And it's a tough thing to describe and 
help uh, get someone through to get a perfect uh, view through your lenses here. There are Fresno lenses in here, so I'll tell you also, a bit of glare. They do have some glare. Now, you, I get over it, and I don't really see it as much uh, once I'm in a game, but when you're reading some text or you have your desktop view open in front of you, Windows is, you know, the white windows when they open, uh, folders and stuff. The background is primarily white. It glares. Um, legible, you can still read things, but it's there. And But how much are you really reading uh, with an index? You're more gaming, so you don't see it nearly as much. But uh, yeah, it, uh, it does have glare on these lenses, and it's a little bit of a downfall. From the lenses to the... Uh, the lenses are one of the largest uh, negatives I have on this thing, but it still kills it in FOV, man. I, I, it's enough for me to say, I'm sorry, Rift S. You, felt, you didn't make me feel like I was totally one with the game. This, you feel one with the game. This you need a gaming PC for too, especially to run at 144 hertz, with, which is the next thing I'm getting to. Good Lord, this thing at 144 hertz is mind blowing compared to the Rift, S, Rift S's 80. Uh, racing games in 80 get a little bit of a ghosting effect behind it. Most games you can't run in 144. I can't even run some of my sim racing games in 144, but when I do 144 with the reprojection, it locks it at about 72 hertz, but the reprojection with the motion smoothing fills in those frames and it looks so good. Oh, my Assetto Corsa settings, I, which took me hours, and I mean, I'm, I'm anal about that shit. It took me hours to fine tune it, but when I did get it fine tuned, mm, beautiful, beautiful. I got it really good. So um, yeah, this thing, when it works, it really works. When it doesn't, which I'm getting to next, I'm afraid of, it could break. A lot of people have complained that the base stations, I have them, you can see one up right over here. I have also have one right here. Um, headset cable stuff. You know, I'm trying to be very delicate with this headset. I don't want to, some people, you know, do some crazy things in VR. I'm trying to take it easy on it, baby it. I mean, once I'm out of that year warranty, apparently it is donezo for getting much replacement parts. Uh, I've heard mixed mixed things on uh, how easy it is for Valve to uh, replace things on this. Uh, sometimes they're, they're good, sometimes I've seen nightmares. So I mean, I need this investment to last a long time because I don't see myself upgrading or changing, especially since my PC, which is a 9700K, 16 gigabyte DDR4 RAM, and a 2080 Ti can run anything really above this. I was capping out the Rift S perfectly with my setup. This, I do have to do adjustments in games because the resolution is a little bit higher and the refresh rate is, of course, a little bit higher. So, I have to, my system can't be running the, the G2, uh, the Reverb G2, or probably any other headset beyond this point. So, unless I upgrade it, to a 30 series card, which I'm not trying to do anytime soon, especially with the way the market is right now with them. So this is what I'm sticking with, and I wanna stick with it for a very long time, and I need things to keep on working. So beyond that, little tips and tricks, removing the visor, I've heard uh, helps with uh, better tracking, and tracking is the next thing I'm talking about, because it is amazing, those base stations and I've been a proponent proponent for inside out tracking forever. That's I'm like, that's the future. That's the way it should be. But now I put up these base stations and when I press that little button on the bottom of here, I turn that shit on and Steam VR turns on. Oh my God, it's perfect. It's perfect. They just catch my controllers and boom, I'm moving. Beat Saber from 80 to 144 is just another world it's like you're playing the game brand new again 144 hertz on beat saber is the smoothest experience i've ever had and the 2080 ti in here can run it at 144 hertz uh but man it is just mind blowing 144 hertz on this thing but the tracking is great the finger tracking takes a little bit of getting used to the controllers are awkward if you're coming from an oculus controller the touch ones which i found to be very comfortable and they work really well 
going to these index ones takes some getting used to because you have to retrain your mind on the aspect of throwing uh, just to let go of your hand in games, uh, to just let things go in reality, in real life. Uh, that's the way it is, but you're not used to that when you're pressing and holding a button to hold something constantly on an Oculus Touch controller. You're, you just got to retrain your mind, and then eventually you'll get used to it, which I have, and it now feels much, much more natural. Um, padding, man, the stock padding on this, this index padding, don't even need to change it. I bought VR cover uh, leather padding for it, much more hygienic, I'll tell you that. <clears throat> but for myself, this padding here is, a, is, is amazing. It's glorious, man. It feels so good on your face and it absorbs a lot of the sweat. So for me, I would keep this padding for myself. For guests, I would bring out the uh, VR cover padding for them to use. Um, because that that is more hygienic for when you're letting more people use it. But this stock valve padding... I don't even need to change it. It's it's amazing, and it gets the the lenses really close to your face too. Uh, pass through cameras, uh, black and white on Oculus. They can be in color here, which is pretty cool, and it is actually a nicer pass through camera. But boundary setup is not. Oculus owns the boundary setup. It is so simple to just go and draw around your room, and you're done. This, it takes a little bit more to, to get it together and set it up. The whole setup process for the whole kit itself is a bit time consuming. I mean, I say 30 minutes, when in a 30 minutes max when you have to put things on your walls and stuff. Uh, Oculus, the Rift S, bam, I just turn that shit on and put it on. Good to go. Uh, Rift S, I did have to unplug the USB from my computer every time, then open up the Oculus store uh, the, the main app on my PC, then plug it into the USB port to get it to recognize the headset. You cannot leave it plugged in, but this, I can leave it plugged in all the time, slip it on, open up Steam, boom, press the button, Steam VR is on. So much more convenience. I could tell why this is such a good headset. Is it worth $1,000? Uh, you know, I at right now, in the way it how far we are along in the, the um, improvements VR, VR has went through, I would say this is probably about the same price. Nah, I'm gonna put it a little up. I'd say this is probably 850. It's, it's an $800 headset. It's not a thousand, it's 800. Cause it's still better than the G2 with how much it comes with. Um, comes with a lot of better things than the G2 other than like the screen. Uh, I had a, a Windows Mixed Reality headset too. I had a Dell visor a while back and uh, that one, the controllers were just, uh, you know, up and down with how well they work. Uh, but the headset itself was still a great starter headset for me when I jumped in. It was one of those white Dell visor headsets. Had the little flip-up visor. Uh, really good. But um, lastly, to talk about, oof, these speakers, damn. So I used to wear a pair of Bose over-the-ear headphones. For, uh, for my setup over my Rift S. It had a little input there, I can plug it in. This has one too, it's behind the face mask, deep within, that you can also plug in aux, uh, headphones with aux into. But you don't even need to touch them. You don't need to touch any headphones that are not these headphones. Uh, they, they just blew my mind. I turned on Beat Saber for the first time when I got this and they just blew my mind. I, 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 speechless. They're so good. I have to say, one of the best features of this Beyond FOV, one of the best features, because this makes you feel more immersed. I don't feel like I have something over my ears. I'm not sweating over my ears. It allows air to get through. I have an itch. I can scratch my ear without having to take something off. It works so well, being off the ear, and the amount of bass that pumps through these things, and I'm racing like heavy V8, V10, cars and they just sound so good slip on good to go um yeah once you got this thing adjusted perfectly you're set you're set i'm trying to do this video totally one take here so if i have little stutters or anything like that i'm doing it all in one take i'm not trying to 
edit because editing takes too long and I'm usually good with editing but I just do not feel like editing right now work's been busy and I don't have time for that um, but beyond that guys this headset's legit thousand dollars no 800 yeah I picked it up I was able to sell my Rift S made a made a probably uh, yeah I made about 180 on it I sold it to a family member they gave it to me for 180 now I have a friend to play VR with which is great uh, but yeah it, beyond that it's I didn't pay a full a thousand for it also got some gift cards from Christmas this is an $800 headset now not a thousand eight hundred especially when I'm gonna come across these uh, uh, drifting things with the controllers your lighthouses might break display might go out I've read so much stuff I, I, I don't know when it's gonna go bad but I'm trying to be very careful and take very good care of this delicate product. Um, I don't have a track system of cables up here, but I really make sure this cable is not being tugged or snagged on, because all it's got is this and that holding it on. I hear people break them all the time. I ain't breaking that. I'm not going to break it. And they added a little bit of slack here so that it's not pulling on it. So we'll see how that goes. But guys, I hope this helps you to understand why I went from the Rift S to the Index, why the pros outweigh the, the cons. There are some cons, but the Rift S, even though its tracking wasn't the greatest behind the back, but it was still great tracking. I actually really liked the inside out tracking. The display was crisp. Oh yeah, very crisp display, mainly because you're outputting a more condensed uh, layer of pixels on a smaller screen. Now this has two screens, so it looks a little more stretched, but it still looks great. Uh, the Rift S was, you know, comfortable, very comfortable on my head. Uh, this is just as comfortable as the Rift S. Weight distribution is great with this, uh, but beyond that, I'm just digging deep here, trying to make sure I close out with a good ending. Um, the Rift S was great. It was, com again, comfortable. Controllers were good. It was just that FOV, man, it was a killer. And this fixed it, and that's why I needed it, and I wanted it, <clears throat> and I picked it up, and I'm very happy with this purchase, and let's hope it doesn't break. And it lasts me for a very long time. But guys, thanks for watching. Uh, look forward to future content. I'm trying to come out with stuff here and there, but... I uh, sold the Rift S too fast. I would have had them both hands here comparing them, but you guys can look at my other videos. I did a Rift S video too, but thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you on the next one. Peace.